today, you guys, we're going to just talk a little bit about um, your experiences in your gifted education class. And we're going to talk a little bit about equity in education. So in your words, what do you think equity in education means? Joshua. I think equity is being fair to other people and then education education is being challenged and not have it being very easy. Okay. And what do you think, adding on to equity, what do you think um, equity is about, Patrick? I think equity is about we all should get the same. We should all get what we need to know. And education goes with equity because it we need equity for our education. We need our education to be our level and everything like that. So to you, is equity getting the same thing for every person or getting what you need? Which is it? It's getting what you need. Mm -hmm. So what I need might be different than what Patrick needs is what you're telling me. Yes. So would you like to add on to that, Parker? Equity. Yeah. So it's it's like what so it, it's like what you said and Patrick said you might need something different like Patrick. So it's like there's three different sized people standing trying to watch over a fence, but the shortest and, and there's three blocks, but the shortest one equality would mean everyone gets one, but equity means the shortest one would get two and then it would go down from there. So that means Basically, is that to su to supporting everyone um, doesn't matter if they're mentally ill or they are in a wheelchair. It just means supporting and give re giving everyone the education they need. Okay. And Piper, what would you like to add to that? Um, what I would like to add with that is, like, I, I agree with Parker, like, Fairness is when everyone gets the exact same thing. Equity is when everyone gets what they need. It's still fair, but it's not like exactly equal. Like being fair would be like, let's say me and Joshua are in the same class and Joshua is better at math than me. But we get equal, but we um, are still doing like equally math. Like we're still doing same like math. equally challenge challenging math and that would be what's fair. What's um, and but then if I got um, like a little bit more help on it, and like I got a better way of ex like a deeper way of explaining it and stuff like that. That's with that's um using equity. It's not exactly being exactly fair to where like everyone gets the exact same thing. It's being fair to where everyone gets what they need. What you need. Okay. Fiona, did you have something to add about equity? Yes, I have something to add about equity. Like, equity like, for education, you need, like, you need to have because you need to be, like, challenged and stuff because, and, like, if somebody has, like, a disability and they're not able to do everything, um, everything that a person without disability has they need uh the the people without the disabilities want like want to, like try to help the person with disabilities so they so they can have it equal like if they're playing it like tag uh you might need to go a little bit slower for the the person with disabilities if okay. they're it. Great. So equity is giving people what they need. Is that is that the word we're going to agree on? Is that the yes. definition? Okay. So why do you think equity would be important to a gifted kid? Why would equity be important to a gifted kid? Patrick? It would... Equity would give us what we need for gifted because... And gifted, we know more than anybody else in our grade. So equity would give us what we need for 
our learning and what would teach us instead of teaching us something we already know. Okay. And what do you want to add to that, Joshua? I agree with Patrick, but with the more to meet our needs with learning and progressing further into learning more things and getting more challenged. And I more think for the kids, it also, it's not just learning, it's also with mental needs. Like with, like with me and having a hard time understanding other people's feelings. Okay, so do you, you're, you're saying is that gifted kids can even have some special needs that are not just educational needs, but more helping them to understand social emotional needs? Yeah. Okay, let's see, Alana, what would you like to add on to that? What I would like to add on to that is we also, gifted kids may also need like, like Joshua said, um, mental needs like to help understand thing, other things that other kids in your class in your age may understand you may understand some things more than others you may understand some things less than others and being in the gifted class it helps you a lot with trying it helps you with um I don't know, with helping you understand regular things, also with um, your academic levels. Okay, so and both social, emotional, and you... education levels. Good. Mm -hmm. And um, Parker, what would you like to add to that? So, in my words, it's like, going to work and like when you go to find a job you'll have a challenge almost every time and when you normally don't have that challenge in a normal general ed classroom because everything comes easy to you then you will never experience like a real challenge if you're in the gifted program or a gifted classroom you get a challenge and then when you go to find a job y'all you'll actually know what a challenge is so you don't think that because er everything doesn't come easy in life. right so when you are expressing this idea of learning how to deal with struggles it's better to learn this lesson now versus waiting until you're an adult and learning about struggles Yes, because mm -hmm. when you're, you're um, younger, you have more, like, because when you're an, an, an adult, you get, you get to the point where you're going to be more stressed than as a kid because you don't know what to do when you have a challenge compared to when, compared to as, as, as a kid when you're stressed then someone can like help you and then you learn how to cope with the stress and learn more ideas compared to when you're an adult and have challenges you're going to be stressed and you're going to be like more kind of like afraid to tell someone because then you're going to feel embarrassed because they um already know how to um, go through a challenge. Okay. Yeah. So being on easy street, sitting back inside of a general education classroom is not helping you to learn that healthy level of struggles and how to get through it. Um, would you tell Mrs. Crowley, you've been in a multi-age gifted classroom, this particular classroom for three years. Tell me the way you felt in the beginning about your struggles and how you would um, exhibit your behavior versus today as a sixth grader um, three years later? Uh, well, when I first started out, when 
I had a lot of challenge. But when you said no homework, I, I was thinking that like, oh, this is going to be easy because the work that you don't finish, it does not matter. So then I went home thinking I had no homework. And then I start looking at my grades and I realized that I had homework. So then that's when the real challenge kicked in. So thinking no one that, ever told me. So it, thinking, just like as a child going into an adult finding a job, no one ever tells you that there's going to be a challenge because they think that they are right because they think that you already know what a challenge is. So thinking that you had, um, you could just do whatever you felt like doing without really realizing you needed to finish all the work became a challenge for you. And in the beginning, that struggle um, was something that you had to work through. And now as a sixth grader, are you way more successful at time management? Yes. Mm -hmm. True. So good job. So anything else um, that anybody wants to share about um, those struggles? And Talise, could you type yours in? Because I know your microphone isn't working for whatever reason. Yeah, still not working. <laughs> so ty type your um, answer in there for Mrs. Carly and I will read it for everyone. So um, in this classroom, not only do you get the opportunity to have um, some challenges, you also get a chance to work with other kids that are also gifted. Tell me how that is similar or different than being in a general education classroom. Hey, Joshua. For me, it's different because you're actually like learning with other kids that know more and like they're also getting challenged. It's not like everybody else is like they're regular and then you, it's like super easy. You don't feel different. And then you don't feel different. Okay. And Piper? Um, the, the two class different, the two classrooms are different because if you were to be in a normal classroom and you were gifted, you wouldn't be challenged. And like Parker said, you wouldn't know what a challenge is. And then you would go into the real world and like not know what a challenge is because you wouldn't be learning you because you would just keep learning the same things over and over again that you already knew. And you would feel, and you would probably feel different because you, because everyone else was just out there like with normal work and everything. And you're just like sitting there like feeling different. And then if you were in the math class and then when you're in the gifted classroom, I know that I felt a lot more comfortable because I was with other people like me and I didn't feel like that odd kid out who's like smarter than everyone. And like before I was in the gifted classroom and before I knew that like other people were gifted like me, like it felt weird and I felt like I didn't want to be gifted because I didn't know that there were classrooms like this that could actually like help me like um like actually have me learn stuff that I didn't know but there I like gifted classic rooms a lot better okay good so Talise wanted to add on to the equi equitable um meaning for her in education is that everyone should be learning something not just stuff that they already know so learning and growing is important to you I see Talise and then you also added Equity is important because if we had normal work in a normal class, we would be would not be learning anything and there would be no point for going to school. So yeah, showing up, so showing up every day knowing that you weren't going to get anything new would be extremely frustrating, I'm sure. And showing up to school where you know you're going to be receiving some learning opportunities is I'm sure feels like you're not wasting your time. So thanks for sharing that. And anybody else want to share anything more about that? Um, now, are there, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Parker. I didn't see your hand. So when I was in before MAG, I would be getting pulled out to a different classroom to do challenge math. And it would be like my same grade level, but then 
everyone was learning the, the same thing. So it's so the teacher really didn't identify if people were struggling or or not. There was only two levels, challenge math or challenge chat challenge math. And you were in one or, or the other. They weren't te teaching like five different things to ten different people because they didn't identify that issue in that. And then that was the only challenge that we were getting. So even though you may have received some challenges, it wasn't being the same as being challenged all day in all subjects. And what happens though when you struggle with subject matters inside of a multi-age gifted classroom? Are you guys all expected to know everything and are you guys all expected to all be at the same learning level? No. 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 So, is that helpful to know that you you can um, not have to worry about being um, being unsupported? Does that help you? Okay. So. Can you guys tell me a little bit about um, why you think having gifted education is something that is important to you? Why, why is gifted education important to you? Parker? It would be like if it's important to me because if you're in a normal classroom you learn nothing and you get no but you get no work basically and you're guaranteed base you're you're basically guaranteed all a's and then when you go to find a job they're like oh you're so smart because they see that you have all a's on your report card and then you, you just basically fail at everything because you don't know how to do anything kind of like when really because when because then when I came in this classroom I started getting B's and then I'm like I started getting mad at myself because I was always a straight A student and so then did you realize that being a straight A student just it was just measuring this is what you already know yeah. And so you didn't have to work for that A. And now you look at it and you worked really hard, but you got a B. And at first it must have been frustrating. But after you realized that B was in a grade or two above your grade level, how did that make you feel? It felt like an A. It felt like an A because you had to work for that, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Did, that, that definitely offered a different perception of what an A is and what a B is. And at the same time, you probably realized that B felt really good because you knew how hard you had to work to get that. Did you want to add something to that, Joshua? Um, I think if I didn't get into this gifted class when I was an adult, it would be real hard and my disability to um, read other people's emotions and facial expressions have gotten worse and that I wouldn't have had any challenge and that I would it would be real hard once I got into the adult and faced a challenge. Okay. So in this classroom, you're right. We get to take time to learn um, social emotional skills that help us develop those um, feelings of how to cope with normal life and everyday people and so inside of our room, it's not always easy because we are all personally working on social emotional issues in some way or another. And so absolutely important that you are um, realizing that that is equally as important as your learning and your education so that you can cope and um, be a part of our world. Right. Thank you for sharing that. Fiona, did you have something to share? No, sorry, I, I did not have my hand up. Okay, and um, can you guys tell me uh, how um, 
you have developed socially, emotionally, what kind of skills have you learned inside your class to help you de develop your social emotional skills? Patrick, did you want to share something? Yeah, I learned to do with things like my, like how to talk to people better and how to understand people that are different than me and not judge them because that's what I always used to do. Somebody was a lot different than me, I would judge them for that. Great. And so what also did you realize about yourself when you were doing that? I wasn't challenged. Okay. So sometimes when you weren't challenged, did that cause some troubles for you? Yes. Yeah. So although you might have felt like the smartest kid in the class, it was probably because you weren't reaching a challenge either, were you? It, it was like, well, that came easy. And so for kids that weren't getting it in your general classroom, you, you're telling me you felt differently about them. However, then when you came into this classroom and you were challenged, all of a sudden that changed for you. How did it feel when all of a sudden you were being challenged and did you shut down just a bit? Yes, I did. Yeah. And it felt a lot different. Did. And all of a sudden you realize, yes, I am smart, but I still have things to learn. Isn't that just kind of the way that ends up happening? Is you're like, you had to come to reality that you're, you're a bright student. It's just you weren't done learning. And so I, I applaud you for um, doing that. Do you want to share anything more about that, Patrick? Nope. Um, Parker, did you have something to share about that? Oh, no. Sorry. My it's hand. Okay. It's okay. It's Joshua, did you, have, did you have something to share? With this, before I came into the math class, it was harder for me to make friends because I couldn't completely understand them and what their feelings so it took longer for me to develop a relationship, make a friends with other people. And then yeah. the math class, I got the chance to get into the math class. And now it's easier for me to make friends because now I can understand how to know their feelings better. How to so, so developing your social emotional skills has also bridged um, the ability to make friendships. And that's important too. Graham, did you have something to share? Uh, yeah, uh, I also had trouble like making friends. I couldn't really understand them. I thought it was a bit different, so I never really like tried as hard as I could have. And now that I'm in here, I uh, I'm better at it, and I think I can make more friends eventually. Absolutely. So you are a fourth grader and new to our program, and you have expressed thoughts such as this, I hate school. Mrs. Crowley realized in the beginning that there was a reason that you might have hated school. Will you tell me a little bit more about that? Um, yeah, I never, I always thought I was a bit different. I never really got like uh, like separated from some other kids or anything like that, but I always like felt like I was different, and the teacher like sometimes like made me uh like uh, go like do like separate work. Yeah, and so um, being separated made made to feel different instead of a part of the classroom. Those are all skills that we work on inside this room. And even though we are three different grade levels, it, you guys realize that you still have something together in common and that's the, your ability and the way you think. And so um, absolutely agree. Thanks for sharing that, Graham. And um, so I wanna leave today with one thought. What if there was no funding available for gifted education, and you were told that we would have to put you back into a regular classroom and um, do the best that we can with just being in a regular classroom. What would you say to those people making those decisions about gifted education 
and the ability for them to fund or not fund this classroom and this opportunity for students. What would you want them to know? Patrick? That it, they're disabling our life and how we've done things and they're disabling the options we have and choices. And they're trapping us. They make it so we can't do anything else we want. It's, and they can, yeah. kind of, they, it's kind of holding you back a little bit. Sounds like you're, you're trying to explain to me about being trapped into a situation that you can't get out of because you wouldn't have any other choices. Okay. And um, Piper, what did you want to say? Um, if people weren't to have like funded the gifted program, I would just want them to know that they should start. They should go in and like think about a gifted, um, a gifted person's perspective, and that um, we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to learn like we would be just keep learning stuff that we already knew and we wouldn't be challenged. And then like we've been going, and then like we've gone over, we wouldn't know how to face challenges in the real life. And I would just want them to know that they probably made the wrong decision. What would you want to say about that, Parker? I would basically never go to actual school and I would try to get homeschooled because I know that my mom would challenge me better than the actual teachers at school if I was not in a gifted classroom. And I would feel also lonely because then I would make no friends. So it's when really I'm bored, I tend to act up. And then when I act up, I get in trouble. So that's, and I would be bored all the time, not knowing what to do. Well, thanks. Thanks for sharing that because that's certainly stuff, stuff that happens for gifted kids. They find trouble when they're bored. Um, and Joshua, what did you want to add? I want to let them know that that the kids aren't being oh, that they that the gifted kids aren't going to be using their full potential because they can't really they don't really have an opportunity because they can't learn new things. And that kids with trouble with, gifted kids with mental disabilities would not be helped and would pro and those mental disabilities would probably get worse. So having a teacher that's specially trained to help kids like you is an important issue for you, I, I hear you say. So um, what did you want to add to that, uh, Alana? Well, I would say it would be because I would tell them what would you, how would you feel if you needed special needs and the option for you to be taught to excel those means? was taken away from you. I and I would ask them how you would feel about that and and to think about to think about um changing that option and funding gifted because we all need special needs in our own way, and we should all equally be treated, gifted and non-gifted. Thank you. Thank you for your thoughts. Neil, what did you want to say about that? Um, I would say that if, uh, if gifted was not funded and could not be a thing, it would be difficult for uh, some children to learn because they would already know the topics and they in school would be a waste of time and they would not learn anything. Thanks for sharing, absolutely. Fiona, what would you want them to know? I would say like, if you, like, we, in the MAG class, it's, it's like we're being challenged, but when we're not in the MAG class and in a regular student class, 
it feels like we're not being challenged enough, and sometimes you get pulled pulled away into some other class, so you can work on different things than other people are working on, and you're like alone, or you have to go into a higher grade grade classroom, and that would make you feel like different in some ways. So you wouldn't feel as comfortable as what I'm yes. hearing about your learning and your opportunities. And yes. um, last, did you have something, Graham, or is your hand still up? So, oh, I just forgot to lower it. Your hand down. Okay. And Parker, what did you want to say? It would be like taking away the special needs class. If you're going to take away the gifted class, then why don't you take away the special needs class? It's basically the same thing. Can you tell me more about how, how you feel it's the same thing? Give me an because example. special needs do need special needs to learn, and gifted people need gifted learning to learn. It's the exact same thing. So you mean to make equity mm -hmm. is to give everyone what they need? It's just really like, it? so there's special needs kids, and they need special needs to learn. And there's and they hire professional special needs teachers to teach that group of kids because they are professionally trained. Now, it um when you get a gifted class, you hire a certified gifted teacher to teach that class. So it's like saying you take away gifted. And then we don't get our special needs to learn and progress to be a, a successful person in life, just like the special needs. They need to learn and progress to be a successful person in life. It may take different learning, but they will get there. So you want to rise up to be the best you can be, and that takes a special teacher to get mm -hmm. you there. I hear what you're saying. Thank you for sharing. You guys did an amazing job today telling me about the ways you feel about your gifted education and your social emotional sorry, development. I'm so sorry about my um, computer. It was being glitchy. Yeah. And you I know, tried to log out. Your... Um, I tried to like, I went out of the meet and tried to join back, but then it all went glitchy and then I couldn't move my mouth. And then, uh, yeah. And then I finally I got a were... clean pen. I saw you were frozen in time, Rowan. So with that, those are one of those challenges that we have to face when we are in distance learning. And um, you guys also have learned how to cope with being in, in distance learning. And I appreciate you guys always working hard and trying despite what it. obstacles are in our way. All right. So you guys have a really super afternoon. Mrs. Crowley, we will talk to you um, yeah, Miss Crowley.